good morning, everyone. My name is Derek Ramsey. I am the moderator of this session. Um, my clock shows that it's uh, right at the minute when we should get started, so I guess we'll go ahead and get going. Um, so today's uh, session is welcome to OAE, when and where we want to want to be. Um, the presenter is uh, Miguel. Um, for everyone that's joining this session, uh, please leave yourselves muted and your cameras off during the presentation. If you would like to ask a question, um, if we can wait to the Q&A portion after the presentation is over, uh, you can also use the shared notes that you can see over to the left, which is just above the user list. Uh, you can enter in any questions there as well. Uh, you're going to also notice that there is another place that you can type in uh, in the chat area. Um, feel free to go ahead and type in any questions there in the chat. I'm sorry, not questions, just, just chat. Don't use questions in that chat area. Um, if you have any technical issues, uh, please send them to me. Uh, my name is Derek on the left-hand menu and uh, send me a direct message and I'll assist in any way that we can. Um, this session and all sessions uh, here at the Aperio Conference are recorded and they will be available at a later date on the Aperio YouTube channel. So Miguel, feel free to get started. All right, thank you, Derek. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes, sounds good. Okay, so I'll just need to uh, find a way to share my screen. Uh, not sure exactly how to do that. Oh, hmm. there's, I think there is a, uh, uh, there's an option at the bottom uh, next to the uh, microphone, the phone, the share webcam. And I think that the fourth option at the bottom is to share your screen except that I don't have a fourth option. Option. Well, I used to, s I, I saw it once, uh, like in the, uh, in some other, uh, in the practice room, but I don't think I can find it now. Let me do this to you. Let's see if this gives it to you. Check now. Ah, perfect. Sweet. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So let me just do that. And Hopefully, you'll be able to see what I see. Which yes, I see the if I see the launch screen, open academic environment. All right. So okay. So let's start. Um, okay. So I'm Miguel. Um, I am the project lead for for the open academic environment, OAE for short. And I want to welcome you all to this presentation. Um, this these are the topics that we'll cover in this uh, in this session. I'll uh, quickly go through what OAE is, what's new with OAE, then I'll uh, start my technical dive uh, regarding where we are and where we want to be regarding the front end, back end. Uh, I'll talk about the project momentum. Uh, then I'll show you the new interface that we've been building for OAE in the last few months. Uh, and then I'll describe what the goals are uh, going forward. And finally, uh, standard stuff like how to contribute to OE. And finally, I'll try to make this quick so that there's time for questions at the end. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what OE is, this is a short overview. Um, in essence, OE is a collaborative platform for academia. It is a platform that provides features and mechanisms for people to collaborate and work together. Um, it has some unique features though. Uh, one of them being the fact that it's multi-tenancy, uh, which means that a single instance can provide different domains for different departments or institutions. Um, it provides collaborative editing for uh, documents and uh, spreadsheets. Uh, it integrates with Jitsi for virtual meetings in groups uh, like this one we're having. Uh, it is multilingual and it is mobile ready as well. So there's a lot of unique features. These are some one of the most important ones, but there are plenty others uh, that I won't be able to cover in this session. The project goals are uh, mainly these three, uh, to enhance academic collaboration. So uh, work on more features and more mechanisms and make uh, uh, collaboration more seamless and productive. Uh, we also need to, and we want to, become a friendly integration platform, mainly because we know that nowadays uh, there is no uh, one platform to rule it all. Uh, most of the open source projects uh, from Aperio and others uh, 
what we can aim at is to become part of some ecosystem. And because of that, we um, OE has a built-in API. Um, so the goal is to be adopted, but also, you know, uh, being aware that that adoption is a part of something bigger. And finally, uh, to foster an active community because, you know, at the end of the day, we're still an open source project. Uh, and, you know, the best way going forward is to have lots of people collaborating and working together for the same cause. Okay, so let me go through um, briefly um, the project status. Uh, the project has been active since 2009, so it's a long standing project. Um, it is uh, deployed in France uh, through this Apotai uh, initiative. Uh, Ian said in the previous meeting, uh, it covers around 80% of French uh, public uh, university system. Um, and I'll show you some stats uh, on this deployment uh, in a few slides. And unfortunately, we have a very small community as it stands, but this is something that we're constantly trying to um, to, to change and for the better. All right. So, what's new uh, with OE? Uh, I'll go through. I'll go through some of the features, most important changes since last year. And the biggest one is that Elasticsearch is finally up to date. Uh, Elasticsearch is a component responsible for search, obviously, um, and it has been uh, stale. Uh, um, uh, since 2017, I think, uh, in version one, and we have recently upgraded it to version 7.9, which is huge, uh, because that's that means it's seven major versions, and um, it is you know a huge refactor, so that you know the project keeps um, uh, is is up to date, and it uses uh, up to date uh, third party systems as well. We have updated some libraries. Uh, OE is built on JavaScript, and as you might know, JavaScript is very volatile, not just the ecosystem, but the language and the standards and best practices as well. So this uh, usually takes a lot of time and involves a lot of different moving parts um, that OE is built on. And finally, we have developed um, a single container uh, that works as a demo, right? So uh, OE has been working with uh, Docker um, for you know for a long time, but we've also we've always had this problem that uh, some orchestration was needed, uh, especially for development. So what we did was we um, we have managed to put every component working together on the single container. So that no configuration is needed now, uh, and for people that want to uh, try out OE, we can just give it, give them a one-liner, and suddenly it's up and running. And so it's uh, it's been really good news. So here are some stats on the Zapotai uh, deployment: uh, twenty-one tenants, uh, more than eight thousand groups, forty-three thousand users, uh, one hundred twenty-six thousand documents, and more than one terabyte used. So it's a pretty, pretty large deployment, and um, it's, that is the reference deployment that we have. It's the one that we maintain, uh, me along with Fred from Isapotai, uh, and the one that we try to uh, regularly update, uh, or at least you know, uh, keep more or less updated um, to the master branch. All right, so let's dive into the backends. Um, and I'm sorry if this is going to sound a bit technical, but I'll try not to, well, I'll try my best uh, to um, not, not to be, uh, not to um, be too technical. So um, regarding OE backend, he had, so he has uh, five different components and the main one is the node application. So Node.js is, you know, basically a JavaScript application. And as it stands, um, it is still callback-based uh, JavaScript. It is ES5 uh, JavaScript, and it has some obsolete uh, dependencies, such as request.js. What this means, without the technical jargon, is that it's still built on a previous generation JavaScript um, standard, basically. Uh, so callbacks should be promises nowadays. 
uh, ES5 should be at least ES6. So what this means is that there's still there's still a lot of work to be done on making uh, this node application more up to date, more modern, and uh, also attractive to other people um, looking to contribute to open source. There's Elasticsearch, the search component, which is finally up to date. There's Redis, which is the cache and message queue component, which is also up to date. And Cassandra, which is not up to date because it's still running on version 2.0 from 2015. Fortunately, that is not a problem uh, because we will replace Cassandra very soon. Cassandra is not a non relational database that was picked uh, when, you know, when the project started, uh, but we don't think it's the right fit anymore. So uh, we'll be replacing it soon, or at least start to replace it soon. And finally, Nginx, it's the, that's the web server, which is also up to date. So, you know, all in all, uh, where we are is that, you know, OE backend is stable and mature. But there is also, there's always a but, right? Um, OE backend requires a, quite a bit of maintenance because we have to keep up with several moving parts. Uh, dependencies, for instance, uh, lots of dependencies. The, the, the Node.js ecosystem is quite um, difficult to, to manage sometimes because the, the philosophy uh, underneath the, the ecosystem is that, you know, uh, you should do only one thing well. So that means lots of dependencies and lots of libraries because they just do one, one thing well. So, uh, and, you know, the downside to that is that we have to keep up with dependencies because they update, you know, regularly. Some update, some dependencies come and go, and you just have to deal with that and try to, you know, keep afloat in this volatile ecosystem. The same happens with integrations. So, for instance, uh, we have um, we have integrated with Etherpad and Ethercalc to provide the collaborative spreadsheets and the collaborative um, documents. And of course, these third party projects also um, have releases and updates. So whenever they update, we have to update as well. And that means uh, more maintenance and, uh, you know, just more changes uh, to keep up. JavaScript uh, as a whole, uh, as a language, it also changes quite regularly, has, uh, you know, whenever something new comes along uh, and it's often not easy to uh, just change the whole code base or uh, to change uh, some pattern or, uh, you know, lots of problems come up when you try to keep up with JavaScript uh, in general. And of course, security updates uh, from the perspective of the, the deployment, we also have to um, keep that, um, keep aware that, uh, be aware that the security, security is, a, is a main concern. Um, it's still hard to work on OE. Uh, part of that is because OE uses Cassandra, and when people work in um, on Cassandra, the whole philosophy of data modeling is quite different from uh, what most people know, which is relational databases, MySQL and uh, Postgres. So this is one of the biggest obstacles that we have uh, because people usually go away when they see that, you know, what they know doesn't fit Cassandra's modeling um, um, perspective, way of doing things. So this is one of the things that um, keeps people away from uh, contributing. Uh, something else uh, which makes things a bit, uh, you know, more difficult than they should be is the fact that we have to, have to uh, use Docker containers. And the problem is uh, Docker um, does it have a like a unique um, universal uh, behavior in different operating systems? For for instance, you can have um, native um, Docker's in Linux, but in macOS it's like a, a hack, so it requires a bit of configuration. And you know, whenever there's extra configuration, there's extra trouble, and it drives people away basically. All right, so where do we want to be? Like I said, OE needs a relational database, and we'll start working on this, uh, hopefully, uh, September onwards, uh, if everything goes well. OE also needs to migrate to next-generation JavaScript, which is uh, ES modules. Uh, 
it has been done uh, up to you uh, know up to a point, uh, but there are still major changes to be done. Uh, and you know this is just JavaScript evolving, and the project has been active since two thousand and nine. So it, as you might uh, understand, the, the, a lot of things change, in the, um, and a lot of code needs to be refactored so that we keep up. Uh, if we still uh, as an open source project, if we don't keep up with, uh, you know, this kind of next generation standards and best practices, it's going to be more difficult to attract other people to contribute and uh, overall the quality of the project will just go downwards. And we also need to reduce the number of uh, third party dependencies. Obviously, there will there'll always be a reality uh, because that's just how things are in JavaScript, but we used to have like a huge number, um, and then they go obsolete, and then they go and maintain, and because of that, the project suffers uh, quite deeply. So um, this is one of the goals that we have, and we've been trying to uh, work on this for the last years, actually. Uh, here's a snapshot of the readme of uh, from GitHub. Uh, I just I'm just putting this here so you can check uh, some of the things that I said. Like the dependencies is up to date, and the developer dependencies are up to date uh, on yellow on the right hand side. But you can also see like a C mark in maintainability. That means that we still have a lot of work ahead of us. And also security vulnerabilities, 33, which is a bit high, but some of them are low risk, or mo most of them are low risk. Um, and it, this just goes to show that uh, there's still a lot of a lot to be done regarding the, the back end. All right, so let's move on to the front end. Um, and not much to say about the front end, except that it is stable and mature, to pretty much like the back end. But the front end stack is quite obsolete. Uh, so the, the code base makes use of um, previous generation technologies, let's call it that. Um, oh, sorry. And that includes jQuery, RequireJS, uh, ES5 modules, and JavaScript. And you know, all in all, not being able to use NPM uh, dependencies, which is like, you know, so such a basic feature nowadays. And basically, what we have is a stack that does provide agility. So if you want to make a change or if you want to change something like um, moving, um, move the code base one step uh, further in, in some regard, everything's going to be difficult because these technologies are like tightly um, coupled. So it's quite a, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare to, to, um, to do something uh, on this stack. And on top of that, uh, the OA visual design is something that I find a bit outdated. I don't think it aged that well. Um, it's also missing out on a lot of best practices regarding um, user experience, uh, design standards, consistency, mobile responsiveness, and accessibility. So what does this mean? Um, where do we want to be? So. We need, <clears throat> sorry, we need to rely on a more modern standards compliant framework. Uh, that means ditching jQuery and RequireJS and all those um, obsolete or at least old technologies. We need to uh, rely on a few third party NPM dependencies and not just dependencies like we do nowadays. We need to rely on like a proper package uh, um, um, dependency manager like NPM uh, so that everything is automated and we can install things without much hassle. And finally, we need to rely on a better design system, uh, hopefully one that ages well and so that we we won't be able, uh, we won't be, um, we, we won't be replacing it in 10 years again. So where uh, where we're going. We are rebuilding the interface. This is, has been going on for quite some time, and I'll show you that in a bit in some charts. Uh, OE is becoming more usable and accessible, 
And OE is making use of a modern framework, which is Svelte and Web Components as well, so that uh, everything is easier to integrate uh, if that um, ever comes to be the, uh, a necessity. Okay, so let me show you a bit of the momentum of the project. Uh, so since Open the period 2020, uh, that's the part of uh, that I've uh, highlighted on the top uh, right corner, uh, two spikes over there. Uh, that means basically that there were two intense uh, moments with lots of commits and code, code changes. You can also see that in the bottom chart uh, with lots of additions and deletions as well. Uh, the first one, the first spike, uh, I think he has has to do with the Elasticsearch upgrade and all the refactorings that uh, came after that. And the second spike is probably the result of some refactorings uh, due to the um, upgrading packages such as um, linting and formatting and stuff. This is the front end repo. Um, so, for the new interface, we have created a new repository, of course, and uh, the culture and, and you know, the, the contributions are uh, way bigger than the, the back end, uh, especially since uh, February. Uh, you can see my chart on the left hand side and Rita's uh, designer um, on the right hand side. With, so, you, you see, the front end is has been the biggest priority so far. Okay, so um, how am I doing on time, Derek? You're doing pretty good. You have uh, nine minutes left. All right, perfect. Uh, okay, so let me show you uh, the new interface. Uh, I won't be able to uh, to run the demo because I think that's risky. It's always risky, isn't it? Uh, but I'll show you some some screen some screenshots. Um, so as you might know, this is uh, OE's um, uh, landing page, and this is uh, the model window for logging in. Uh, so this is the OE that you know, and this is the OE that you haven't uh, seen before, um, the new interface, uh, which is, I think, much better and you know, brighter and more colorful as well. And this is the model window with uh, the, the redesigned model window. This is, uh, so as you log in, you, uh, you get to see the recent activity. And this is been basically what it looks like uh, with a few uploads and links, um, not much in it. And this is what it's going to look like, uh, hopefully, in the next few months. Uh, and I think that you'll agree with me that things look way better uh, in, the, in the new design uh, in so many ways that I can even uh, pinpoint. <laughs> um, but basically, um, new design system, uh, better um, uh, usability, better, better interactions, uh, and above all, um, a, a better experience for uh, for the user. I think you'll. You'll agree, agree with me on this. Okay, so let me tell you a bit about the obstacles uh, that we've been facing uh, since we started the front end development. As you might know, uh, front end development is still a nightmare uh, nowadays, and there's a lot of reasons for that, uh, but it's still true. Uh, one of the things that make, uh, makes front end development uh, hard is that you need to make different tools work together and technologies. And that means that, uh, well, you can start like with uh, some boilerplate uh, pretty easily, but you know, soon enough, you're gonna need some linter or you're gonna need the, the compiler or you're gonna need to use next generation JavaScript. And you know, it, it amounts to a lot of work uh, when you start putting uh, putting all those technologies together, um, and you know, in, in a way, it should be simpler, but it's just the way it is. And um, you, you just have to hope that the community helps uh, in in doing this. Um, the other obstacle uh, is that the OE is quite um, tricky to uh, to integrate, not just the 
back end, uh, especially the multi-tenant approach, it kind of makes things a bit different from all the tutorials that you uh, find on Google on how to approach uh, or how to uh, start some new application. It, it doesn't really apply uh, to OE because it, it's multi-tenant. You know, uh, it's just you just need to adapt basically. Um, you also need to adapt from the, no, the old code base because we are keeping the business logic. Obviously, we're just changing the um, under um, the underlying technology and the design system, but the business logic is still the same. And that means that you need to adapt all the models that we have uh, and the logic as well uh, into the new code base, right? And that is an obstacle because, well, in a way, it would be easier to do everything from scratch, but yeah, that would take too long, right? So that's another obstacle because we need to um, coordinate, right? So we have the new shiny stuff on one hand, but then we have an old code base on the other hand, and we have to, um, to join, join it and merge it. All right, so going forward, um, the, these are the goals that we have. Uh, getting a prototype out, obviously, that would be like a dream. Uh, hopefully, next year we'll be able to showcase a more complete and functional prototype. Uh, maximizing agility, obviously, that I've been, uh, I've, uh, I've told you a bit about this. Uh, every change is hard. It should be simple, but it's hard. Uh, and that has to do with the technical debt, has to do with the technological stack. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot, a lot of things that we uh, need to do, and they all uh, contribute to this simple idea that uh, contributing should be easy, uh, changing should be easy. Uh, you need to be agile. Uh, you need to go and you know take small steps uh, at a time instead of you know um, approaching it as a, like a waterfall uh, project. Um, and obviously that would make OE more newcomer friendly. Um, a lot of contributors uh, just, you know, they, they are pushed away by, by all this and uh, that, that makes it a, a priority for us as well. And finally, help uh, potential parties uh, demoing and deploying OE. Uh, so from time to time we get contacts, um, we get contacts from people uh, trying to understand what OE is, what it looks like, what it, what feature does it uh, have? And it's had, it's al always been a bit of a nightmare, but since we have now the um, the, the Docker container, I think things will, uh, will be uh, much more simple, um, uh, much simpler in the future. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, there will be no, no problem in uh, people trying OE by themselves in the future. All right, so finally, uh, how to contribute to OE, uh, provide ideas and feedback. Uh, this is uh, actually one of the best things you can do for OE because uh, we we work on OE uh, like 24 seven. And uh, sometimes we are too immersed in our, in our own ideas and uh, you know, our, our, our uh, roadmap. So having people tell us about what they think OE uh, should be or should have, uh, is actually um, a great uh, great way for us to, to think outside the box, right? Uh, and ask questions because, again, by trying to answer those questions, uh, we are um, we're led to think differently. Uh, contribute to GitHub. Uh, that's not just Go. That's also Docs. The because documentation usually uh, is all well. It shouldn't be, but sometimes it's a, like a second thought, and we just forget to update it. Uh, so it's a great way for, um, for the project to, um, to be up to date as well. And feel free to keep in touch. There's the homepage in the project blog and the Discord uh, channel links. Um, we, we are on this Discord channel pretty much every day. So any question that you may, that you may, that you may have, um, just feel free to, to do so. And this is what I have for you today. Uh, so thank you. And please ask away. Yep. Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, feel free now to type them in the chat in the share notes section and raise your hand. Uh, we have just a minute. Uh, the next session starts in five minutes. Ooh.
you're welcome. Thank you. So again, let me just say that anything that you might want to ask, feel free to drop us a line on the Discord channel or in the, what is it called? The, 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 the solutions expo slots. The, I'll be, I'll be on them. So. Okay. I think we're good, everybody. The next session start in five minutes. So I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Thank you, Miguel. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks.